We welcome you to the land of sea lions and banana slugs. There's volleyball, but there's also table tennis. It's the premiere on the west coast of Major League Table Tennis. And tonight we begin with a Pacific Northwest showdown. The Portland Paddlers and the Seattle Spinners. Welcome inside Kaiser Permanente Arena, the home of the Santa Cruz Warriors. But this weekend, it's the home of Major League Table Tennis for the five-time national champ, Sean O'Neill. I'm Evan Lepler. Sean, we saw the four East Coast teams wage battle in Daytona Beach last weekend. Now the West Coast teams get to experience what we saw last week, which is the golden game and the intensity of professional table tennis in the United States. Yeah, it was really the intensity that stood out to me to see the players fighting for every single point, especially at those 10-10 sudden deaths. It's going to be really interesting today to see who levels up and, and who's ready to go. We got a lineup that we can show you. We're going to see the two-time reigning U.S. national champion in our opening match today. It's Nikhil Kumar representing the Seattle Spitters. He'll be going against Jiwei Shaw from the Portland Paddlers. As you look at the other matchups, four singles matches, and then the one doubles matches in the middle, what stands out about what we're gonna see tonight? Well, really with the Seattle team, it's a young team, very hungry, number of players that will definitely have a future, not only this year, but into the coming years for Major League Table Tennis. Tyrese Knight, Johan Hogberg, will be in the second match. Kule, Kole, who's an incredibly high rated player coming off an injury, so we're not gonna see him play singles tonight, but he's one of the faces to watch playing doubles for sure. Absolutely, with the coach putting him into doubles. It's gonna be interesting in the fourth and final singles match, the cross-gender matchup, Rachel Sung versus Andrew Tsao. But let's focus on the first match, and we can see the faces warming up. Shaw and Kamar each trying to set the tone for their team. What should we know about Jiwei Shaw? Uh, Jiwei is playing out of Paddle Palace in Portland, Oregon. He's there as their primary head coach, but once Major League Table Tennis came on board, he dropped everything to just focus on training. He's posting on Facebook his daily runs. He's really trying to make this his sport, his activity, um, moving a little bit away from the coaching and just wants to get his team on the board. And on the other side of the table, the 20-year-old Nikhil Kumar, who really made a name for himself in the Tokyo Olympics representing USA in 2021, but then elevated his stature as the national champion in 22 and again in 23. And it's so difficult to repeat, and he did that so well at the US Nationals in Fort Worth this 4th of July week, so he knows what it takes to win. These players have played a couple times before, both in the combine for Major League Table Tennis, but also in a variety of tournaments. Nikhil has come out on top every time, so look for Jiwei try to change that. The 20 year old lefty Nikhil Kumar will get us started. Here we go. And a good start for Kumar, who's currently a student at Cal Berkeley. And you can hear Jiwei right out of the box. He knows it's so important in these early matches to get going. Cannot afford to go down early on. Two, one, four, Kamar and Seattle. We saw each team enter not long ago. Seattle was spinning, Portland was paddling. Neither was quite as intimidating or ferocious as the crocodiles chomping, like we saw a week ago down in Daytona Beach. Good serve from Shaw. We're even two apiece. Again, it's game to 11, not win by two. Each singles match and each doubles match will be three games apiece. And Shaw takes his first lead as Kumar hits it wide. And I think, Evan, one of the differences when they've played before, it's always been individual. Now that they're in a team setup, you will hear Jiwei really encouraging himself 
using a lot of chas after every time he wins a point. He knows what it's like to get on the board early on here in Santa Cruz. How does the experience differential factor in with Shah being 34, Kumar more accomplished, but a much younger age, just 20? Yeah, really, Jiwei has been primarily a coach for the last... Oh, nice, the edge. <laughs> nice edge ball there by Shah. He's been a coach for the last six to eight years, both in China and Japan in the United States. Kumar has great placement. He really has good pattern play. He's able to get his offense in on demand. Jiwei Shah, very strong backhand. Probably the strongest backhand that we have in the U.S., but he's gonna have to set it up. Shah was not happy about that last shot. Oh, he wasn't happy about it, but he gets it right back and we're tied five all. And you can see right after Kumar served, he's so quick to get that first attack. He just backhand opens down the line. Catches G-Way off with a slightly less heavy topspin that went into the net. Beg your pardon. And you can hear G-Way every single point. He wants this badly. Jiwei wants to get his backhand into play as quickly as possible. Nice block on that last return. Kumar back within one. Great serve and follow by Kumar. Good footwork by Jiwei Shaw, keeping his forehand as his primary shot, spinning the ball up, and then stepping around and getting one more forehand into play. Heavy topspin. Great defense there by Kumar, able to withstand Jiwei's strong forehand loop with a nice block and then turned it right around for a counterattack. One more serve for Shah, up 8-7. Kumar sends it long. Kumar is just so strong out of his backhand corner. Look for him to turn the corner and get his forehand into play, literally covering the whole table with his forehand when he goes on offense. Kumar firing himself up before this serve. Oh, very tricky side spin, top spin serve. Shah tried to keep it short and low, but a little bit of a misread and that ball popped up. I have two serves right now. Pretty compelling way to start this weekend, huh? 9-9, nine, nine, game one. Playing to 11. Win by one. There's the first let. Beautiful. Fired up. Beautiful forehand, inside out, down the line. Really nice, tight reverse pendulum serve. He got the pop-up, took it to the open court. Game point, Shah. And we've 
got a 10-10 game in our first universe point of the weekend. Again, G-Way tried to go for the same forehand loop down the line, just too far out of his reach. And we are tied at 10-10. Kumar with the serve. Next point wins. And Kumar takes it from down 10-9. He wins the final two points. And the two-time reigning national champ has his first point in the MLTT. And just a little inside out serve. Jiwei Sha tried to keep it short, but too much spin on the ball, and it just jumped off the end of the table. Well, if you're new to Major League Table Tennis, last weekend was the very first weekend. We were in Daytona Beach. Here's the format, four singles matches, three games to 11. The one doubles match in the middle of the four singles matches. And the golden game is really the, the new innovation that has everybody around the sport talking. The golden game, the grand finale to every match, Sean. A single game to 21. And what's different is you only play individually four points at a time. All five players who are active compete. And it's just a fascinating microscope into the psychology and intensity and, and just matter of fact nature of every point counts. What I love about it is the ability for the losing, the team that's trailing, to go ahead and kind of steal the win. Or if you have a lead, you can just elongate that and help your team in the overall standings to get to the playoffs. Last weekend, the Florida Crocs went 3-0 in Golden Games. 3-0 overall in match results, but they're currently in second place because the Florida Crocs did not get as many points overall as the Carolina Gold Rush. Game number two here underway. Seattle in front, 1-0, courtesy of Kamara's 11-10 win. And now G.A. Shaw trying to get the paddlers on the board. Very good attacks there by Portland's G-Way Shaw, keeping the forehand going. He has a wonderful backhand, but so far he's been living on his forehand side throughout the match. And the serve and follow by Kumar. He knows exactly what's coming back. Able to, again, get his forehand into play, taking it to the completely wide open forehand side. What can you do about that? Just got to play that ball wide out to his forehand, get him out of the backhand corner. Both these players are so strong when they start on their backhand side because they get a chance to turn the corner, use their forehand, and play anywhere on the table. Both these players were the first round pick of their respective team. TT draft held in late August. Each of the eight franchises drafting eight players. Certainly saw some of the first round picks, in particular Enzo Angles and Daniel Gorak have huge opening weekends on the East Coast. They clearly were MVPs for their team. And now a little separation for Jiwei Shaw. continuing to control that serve and serve return. Super third ball attack by G-Way Shaw. Both these players, when they get a high ball, they love playing the straight ball out to the forehand side, that righty-lefty combination 
often will open up that angle for attack. Kamar couldn't believe he sent it long. Jaws, a four point lead here in game two. Kumar is going to have to take both of these points to get back into game two. Jiwei Shaw going for a little bit too much. Kumar has such an aggressive block, so when somebody attacks on him, not only does he return it, but he can change the spin. Wow. Get an easy ball. Look out. And deal with the pop-up smash. So fast to get up by the net to deliver this final smash right into the body. In your face. Got all the spinners standing up on that last point. Chavo, despite the chin music, still has a two-point lead on his serve. See Coach Christian Lilleros giving some signals. It seemed that he was saying do play number two. Here's Coach Lugo Sadowska of the Seattle Spinners. And, and that wasn't the serve that Little Roos wanted. Kumar just jumps on that last serve for the direct winner. Serve went a little too long. Kumar just makes him pay for it. So Kumar on a 4-1 run. Close a four goal gap down to one. And Kumar just taking control and holding the table, not giving an inch. And you can hear the exuberance of Jiwei Shah. Every point matters right now. Seven now for Shaw. He had a game point, a couple of them in fact, in the first game, but could not put Kumar away. And he wants to score right now on his own serve. He doesn't want Kumar to have two serves to even it up. Yeah. Kumar back within two with two serves. Kumar looking very confident right now. Jiwei looking a little unsure of himself. Just an incredible forehand on the attack immediately. You could see that Kumar knew exactly what he was going to do. No hesitation, got his forehand into play. Mixed up the location. And Shaw takes it. A good deep return. Caught Kumar off guard. And it's an 11-9 win in game two. Jiwei Shaw and Nikhil Kumar split the first two games. And this is going to be a really interesting third game coming up. And Jiwei Shaw was very smart. He got his backhand flip into the point, not allowing Kumar to play off of a push that Kumar had done so well with earlier to come within one more point. But Shaw is going to have to be more aggressive. He can't just play the easy attack. He has to take some risks, put the pressure on Kumar to play offense on both underspin balls coming out of and topspin. Kumar made it interesting from 10-7 down, but Shaw able to close it out. What do you think 
about Kamar's body language. Every single shot he misses, we're seeing some sort of histrionics, like he can't believe he made the mistake. Yeah, generally, as a coach, you don't want your player doing that. But the one thing that Nikhil Kumar has is a lot of self-confidence. Regardless of the score, he believes he can win the next point, and that's really been huge in his success as a player. Last week in the 30 different matches, only eight of them saw the two players split the first two games. Paul just grazed the edge on that one. Equalizer lets out a roar. Then look for both of these players to attack to the opponent's forehand side. That's where they're most vulnerable when you have a righty lefty matchup. Some stellar defense from Nikhil Kumar, and he takes a 2 1 lead. And you can see the self pump up right now by Kumar. Jiwei Shaw on the offense, driving his forehand, but just unable to deliver on that final attack. Kumar really feeling the rhythm right now dictating with his backhands out to Jiwei Shaw's forehand. Now with the serve. Oh! Kamar's largest lead in any of the games. And he knows at 1-1 to get a plus one for your team. Absolutely a must. Jiwei's got to do a lot more with that server turn. Playing it soft over to the forehand side. Christian Lillyrose, the Portland Paddlers coach, made the timeout signal after making eye contact with Jiwei Shaw. And we will get the timeout. Kamar has won five of his first six points to begin game three. Timeout's relatively new to table tennis over the years. The big question is, are you leading when you call timeout and you're trying to finish the game and you don't want any small comebacks, or are you trailing and you want to just somehow get back into it? And right now, a very defensive timeout by Portland. Christian Lily Rose has coached table tennis all around the world. He's Coached players in 53 different countries. He's been to 73 different countries. He's worked with national teams, places all around the world. Most recently, he was working with the Barbados national team. It's one of the reasons he drafted Tyrese Knight, who's coming up and playing for Portland in the second singles match here. And of course, Christian Lillerus and Jiwei Shaw, they both play out of the Paddle Palace Club in Portland, so Jiwei getting the nod as the first pick in the draft. Jiwei was eighth and Kole was ninth. He, they had the last pick of the first round and the first pick of the second round, which you, know, you might argue is the best spot in the draft. You don't win the lottery, but by losing the lottery, you may have won the lottery. And some of the players in the league were choosing and let the league know whether they were available for both East Coast, West Coast, or just maybe one of the regions. So, draft very important. Oh! Kamar picks up right where he left off. surprised are you by what we're seeing here in game three in the context of the first two games being razor thin margins? 
this has really been how when they've played in the past, Nikhil has always had the upper hand and it's really due to his placement and his ability to play that ball Seven, from two. his backhand corner, both out to Jiwei's forehand and also down the line. So Jiwei really needs to get some offense going right now just to knock Kumar out of that backhand corner. Two, eight. Another loud roar from Nikhil Kumar. And the Seattle spinners three points away from a 2-1 overall lead. Two, nine. Kumar is going to have the upper hand when both players are attacking and he's close to the table. Jiwei just has to be prepared for shots anywhere, which is going to make his attack that much more suspect. Ten, two. And here's the confidence and self-motivation that Kumar is known for. Game point. What a showcase Game from Nikhil Kumar. And I give Shaw credit. An impressive effort. Took Game 1 to the wire and got the W in Game 2. But it was all Seattle. An 11-2 win in the rubber match to take a 2-1 lead. And Kumar just too strong out of the serve and follow pattern. Nice deep serve, quick forehand. Very strong performance by the two-time national champion. See Jiwei a little frustrated. He's got to be Johan. a bit happy, though, to be going into the third game at 1-1. So he will get points for his team. We'll see, we'll see Jiwei again in the doubles match playing with Kole. Second singles coming up next. But uh, we're going to eventually get Nikhil on a headset to talk about his very first ever Major League Table Tennis Paris. experience. Nikhil, thanks for joining us. What was that like playing your first ever match in the MLTT? Uh, it was quite exciting, honestly. Um, I think I was a little nervous at the first game. I was playing a little bit tighter initially. Um, I was fortunate enough, I think, winning that first game 11-10 gave me a little confidence going to the next game and the future games. Uh, Jiwei did come back strong in the second set and he played a great performance, but um, I did change up some things going into the last set and fortunate to come out with the win. So Nikhil, you've played Jiwei a number of times in the past and you've done extremely well. Did you come into the match thinking you needed to make any changes based on the last time you played? Um, I think going in, at, initially, I wanted to play my game and how I knew uh, my strategy was against him. But I also expected him to make some different changes, which he did. He changed up his serve to serve more reverse pendulum, which I wasn't expecting initially. But I had to adjust quickly and get the hang of it, and fortunate enough to be able to adjust quick enough. Nikhil, the first two games were 21-20 combined. The last game was 11-2. What changed in game three for you? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. I think I just went all out knowing there was, this was the last game, nothing to lose right now. And it was kind of important for me to be able to give my team a lead going from the first match into the next. And lastly, as the reigning national champ, what does it mean to you to play professional table tennis here in the United States? I mean, it's amazing. I don't think I ever had the opportunity to do this before. Um, I did have some uh, experience playing in Europe internationally, but to be able to have it in the U.S. and not have to, and to be able to play at home, in a sense, does feel great and gives me the flexibility while I'm also studying as well. Great stuff. The journey's just begun. We'll see you for your first Golden Game in a couple hours. Thank you. Nikhil Kumar takes two out of three from Jiwei Shah. And now we meet the next pair of singles players. Tyrese Knight has been called the Barbados table tennis king. He was a fifth round pick for Portland. And then Jay Johan Hagberg, a sixth round pick for Seattle. He's from Sweden, his origin a mixture of Lao, Vietnamese, and serve. Swedish. Love off. Let. I'll let Love Tyrese off. Knight to serve. Love That's a of a way to start a match from Jay Hagberg. Again, we have another righty-lefty matchup here, so see a lot, expect a lot of balls in the straight direction, but also Tyrese 
although he's quite offensive, he can go back and play defense with a backhand or forehand chop. Look for him to really mix it up here in this match. Two, one. Neither of these players have really looked to work into the point early on. They're both coming out swinging. Yeah, that's what we've seen, especially at Daytona Beach. Anytime you can make that first big shot, it sends a huge message. Oh, that's a huge Two, forehand by Tyrese. Caught the back corner. This great step around from the backhand corner. No hesitation, straight down the line for the winner. You don't anticipate a defensive player or a combination player to have such a strong attack right off the serve. They like to leave the table, force errors from the opponent by changing the spin and moving the ball around. Just like that, it looked like an easy mistake by Johan. But Tyrese is changing it, putting side spin on the ball, back spin, mixing it up. Well-placed ball there three. on the edge of the table. He did not aim for the edge. He was just trying to keep it as wide as possible. Five, four. Hagberg took control of that point early. Back within one at 5-4. Big forehand from Tyrese. Tyrese does a great job with the combination, getting that first top spin with the forehand and then follows it up with a nice drive down the line. Five, six. Back to one point game. Both these players love to get their forehand going from their backhand side of the table. Risking leaving an open court, the opponent can return it. Right, here comes the defensive prowess of Tyrese Knight. Does that keep you off guard as the opponent not knowing he's going to be aggressive or defensive? You anticipate that Tyrese will be a defensive player all the time, so his attacks are very surprisingly. Nice service there. Tyrese really mixing up the spin on the ball. Six, Tough eight. break for Knight. Knight cord was fortunate to get a paddle on it. Couldn't get it back to the table. So Hagberg trailing by two with a couple serves here. Very strong play by Knight, really mixing it up. On one side of his paddle, he has a long, pimpled surface that really allows him to add extra spin to the ball when he's on defense. You can hear it a little bit. It's more of a muffled sound. Another edge for Knight. And he's got a slew of game points right here to begin his Major League table tennis career. You can see Knight reminding himself to stay relaxed. Eight. Lost both points on his serve, and suddenly Hagberg's right back in it. So as a defensive player, normally he would go into a chopping mode, but now, knowing he wants to finish it out, Tries to loop it, but just lifts it way off the end of the table. Oh, what a get and what a finish to game one. Tyrese Knight defended a winner with a winner. How was he able to get his paddle on the ball after that rip down the line? Perfectly angled for the amazing shot. No one at home. Nifty stuff from the 24-year-old from Barbados.
We're tied 2-2 overall now, Sean. Three of the four games we've seen so far have been very, very competitive. And both these players with contrasting styles, both wanting to get some offense going, but Tyrese Knight is traditionally a defensive player. He just likes to chop the ball. There's a nice underspin there, changing the spin. But that final point was completely amazing. The ability to get his racket on the ball and find the open court. Off to a great start tonight here in Santa Cruz, California. Last week in Daytona Beach, about 42% of all of the games were decided by three or less. So far tonight, three out of four. 75%. Game two, spinners to serve, love off. Hagberg to serve, game two. Boom. One, love. Great step around, just an insane angle by Hagberg playing his forehand out of the backhand corner and then going inside out. Coming right back to the table and Knight retaliates with a killer of a forehand. One, two. Now we want the players to, to play quickly, but we also want to show the <laughs> incredible winners get back to those shots during a timeout or after the game because, man, those first two winners, one from each player, two nifty. Off. And it's so difficult to play somebody like Tyrese, who you expect just to stay on defense. Every opportunity to attack he has taken. There's the change of spin. And here comes the chance for the attacks. Knight apologetic two, about the net cord. Last week, we saw the defense from Matthew de Santelan, the Frenchman. Three, oh. Really changed the pace and tempo of his matches against every opponent he played against. It, it's really great for the, span, the fans and spectators to see a defensive player because obviously the points are going to go longer. The rallies will go five, six, seven, and eight, and you can see how they build the point. Tyrese has to make that backhand push. Very smart by Tyrese. Again, getting his forehand attack, the placement out to the forehand side, very smart. Both these players love to be in their backhand corner. Hagberg takes the lead here in game two. Not a lot of emotion out of Hagberg. After every single point, he just looks ready for the next one. Tyrese showing a lot more. Four, six. A two point lead for a guy known as Jay from Stockholm, Sweden. 29 years old. One thing about the West Coast teams, there are guys in their 20s and guys in their 30s, and we're going to see uh, the, the great Egyptian who's in his early, mid-40s. But there are more teenagers in the West Coast. Almost every team has multiple teenagers, guys 15, 16, 17 years old, playing at the highest level. And that's what makes Major League Table Tennis such Six, a seven. wanted and desired product because it's going to allow the U.S. players to be full-time, to really, like Kumar, seven, who we saw in the first match, go to school and not have to travel to Europe and take off a semester. So just so welcomed for Team USA's future on the international field. Wow. Seven, eight. Hagberg dialed that one in, was able to take Tyrese Knight's very strong forehand attack and just redirect it with his own forehand rip. Eight all. A lot of net balls we've seen, and a couple yeah. of edge balls as well. 
Well, Hackberg has, has had the more impressive winners in this game overall, but it's eight all. That's sir. That's eight all. Again, Tyrese has to make these somewhat easy returns. Strong Eight. angle by Hagberg. <laughs> Serving from the forehand side, but then stepping around the backhand, and again, finding that wide out to the forehand hole. Game point, Seattle. Knight Nine. fights Nine. one off. And Knight knows if he can make that opening loop with heavy topspin, it's going to be so difficult for Hagberg to counterattack it. How about this? Last week, Sean, only 12 of the 90 games were tied 10 all. We are two for five so far in week two. Universe point. And Hagberg earns a split of the first two games, inducing the long shot from Tyrese Knight. And uh, this has been a pretty competitive and compelling start to the first West Coast Major League Table Tennis weekend. And these players couldn't be closer matched, both guys working so hard to get their game into play. That time, Hagberg made a very strong loop can see how calm he is. Just wants to keep the pressure on. So I mentioned how last weekend only eight of the 30 matches saw the first two games be split. The, the, the flip side of that is that 22 of the 30 matches, one player won the first two games. And you might think, well, that the player that won the first two probably would win the third because they won the first two and they're the better player. That wasn't the case. In 50% in of those matches, the player that lost the first two won that third and final game. And you feel like that's a different flavor of the format here in MLTT. A absolutely. Normally, after you lose two games, mentally you do a checkout. But what we saw in Daytona Beach was the players knew from their coaches' pressure, you've got to win the third game if you're down 0-2 because you cannot afford a sweep and lose three points to the opposing team. Tyrese Knight just got a yellow card. You know why? I am not sure. I've been trying to keep track. The umpires have been very strong and consistent in making sure that any type of Game display three, of frustration, third, whether it's touching the table with the racket or kicking the balls, Sometimes if you're coming out to the table late, that can occur after a game. And there's a lucky one. tomahawk smash by Hagberg now catches the, the net. The first yellow card is just a warning, but another one becomes a red, and that's a point penalty, and we saw that impact Golden game last week. Exactly, and the challenge is because this is a team event, they carry, those, over. They carry over, and if you don't realize your teammate stuck you with a yellow card, and then you get a little frustrated, that could cost you a game. One, two. Nothing's worse than scores nine all. You do something all of a sudden, or 10-10. You have to shake hands. Oh, that's a nice step around by Hagberg. He is so strong. Out of his backhand corner is a lefty, very similar to Nikhil Kumar. Just loving that backhand corner. And the Seattle Spinners sending on a couple of lefties to start this match. Hagberg takes a 3-2 lead. A lot more emotion from the Swede. Left, two, three. That's a very three. smart play by Knight. Anytime he can make that first opening top spin, especially out to the forehand side, it puts huge pressure on Hagberg. John, you told me last week that each country has its own table tennis style. How, how would you characterize maybe after this point the Sweden style? 
Sweden just has a rich tradition. Um, through the 80s and 90s, they were the first country to take China down. And that, I'm sure, was one of the reasons for Johan Hogberg to get involved. That looked like that ball went straight down. Three, five. Did not catch the edge. But I would say that the Swedes have very good table awareness. They're very strong at tactics. And physically, they're very big players. So look for them to use leverage with their legs and also their reach. Three, five. Knight serving, trailing by two. Three, long six. and he trails by three. We did get word. Apparently he received the yellow card because he stayed off the table for too long. Was talking to his coach for too long. And the boxer not coming Seven, out of the three. corner to begin the, the round at the right bell. Right, after that minute of coaching, you have to be ready to play. Hagberg creating Three. separation here. Right now, Hagberg is completely dominating the play, getting his forehand going without any difficulty. Three, nine. How familiar were, were you with Jay Hagberg before this weekend? This is the first time I've seen him play. I've seen Tyrese Knight play a lot more. He plays Four, out of the 888 nine. club in the Bay Area in San Francisco. It's a mouthful. And again, we've seen five. Hagberg try to counterattack Knight's opening spin, and normally it misses by about four to six feet. Knight does a nice job of creating heavy topspin on his forehand side. That's a heavy underspin ball there. Nice read. Nine, and Knight making a final surge here to try to get back into the game. Seven, nine. Time now out. Knight with the serve. The chance to even it up and the spinners take a timeout. Knight better make sure he gets back to the table. It's a 4-1 run from Tyrese Knight after he trailed 8-3. Luba Sadovska. Slovakian who currently lives in North Vancouver, Canada. Outside of Major League, she's done an amazing job to grow the sport of table tennis in BC, basically doing all elements, running a club for kids, for seniors, for Parkinson's, for para. Just a one woman knocking her crew, just does everything. So I think it's, it's well past time we issue the, the, the disclosure and the uh, disclaimer. Uh, you are a resident of Portland, Oregon. But that does give you perspective. I, I know you're going to be on unbiased. That's your pro. But can you, can you talk about the rivalry between Portland and Seattle and maybe how Vancouver fits into that as well in the table tennis world? Yeah, the battle for the Great Northwest. Seattle has a great club, a great community. Now with these international players representing Seattle, I'm just thrilled that Portland also has a brand new owner in Ivan Levy. Great player Seven, in the nine. past, a son that plays internationally. Um, Bragging rights are definitely on the line right now. Oh, what a shot Eight. by Tyrese Knight. How did he keep his racket on the ball on that forehand side? Amazing. He's in a 5-1 run. A 6-1 run to tie it up 9-all. And this is what we saw in Daytona Beach. Every point matters. The players fighting so hard for their respective teams. Great forehand loop. Into the net, and Hagberg will earn the first match point. Here in second singles. After these two players split the first two games on Hagberg's paddle. And Hagberg wins it 11-9. Not a ton of emotion for Jay Hagberg throughout the match, but he lets out a scream of glory after he takes two out of three from Tyrese Knight. What a strong play at the end of the game. 
by Hagler, just mixing it up, changing the spin on the serve, forcing Tyrese Knight to go on offense. But very tricky serve that just goes long, and you can see the sense of relief and excitement for the spinners. Loses the first game, 11-8, but then 11-10, 11-9. What a start. Five of our first six games tonight have been decided by three or less. Uh, and Hagberg outduels Tyrese Knight. Jay, congratulations. What was that like from an intensity standpoint? How did you get it done? Sorry? What, what, what did that feel like in terms of the intensity, and how did you pull it off to get the win? Yeah, it's always... Uh, uh, you feel a lot of pressure regardless who you play uh, because it's a premiere of the league. So you of course obviously want to perform well. So uh, and he plays a little bit, I don't know, a little bit unorthodox. So and I was a little bit, I guess, nervous and I felt pressure. But you know, I dropped. I had 9-3 in the third. I dropped it up to 9-9 and then I won two points. So yeah, uh, so far I'm satisfied. So yeah. So coming into this match, did you think of him more as a defensive player? combination player or offensive player? Yeah, he threw me off a little bit, to be honest, because I thought he was going to chop way more. But every time I chop long, he would like loop on the first one. And sometimes, I don't know, it made me a little bit uncomfortable. I usually really enjoy playing defenders, but yeah. yeah. Well, look, you got to go play doubles here, so we should yeah. let you go. But yeah. congratulations. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more later. Yes, no we will. <laughs> Congrats, Jay. Thank you. I was looking out there. I'm like, why aren't the doubles <laughs> players warming up? Because we're, we're taking up his time. I'd love to hear more of his perspective, but we got to let him go. He's playing doubles with Fabiola Diaz from the Dominican, excuse me, from Puerto Rico. And uh, they'll be going against Jiwei Sha, who we saw in first singles, and Ko Lei, who's one of the top players in the United States, two-time U.S. Open men's singles champ, coming off a bit of an injury, though. What do you expect from Jiwei and Kole? It's going to be a very interesting mixed match Players. for the Seattle Spinners. It's a mixed doubles team. And for Portland, it's a men's doubles team. So how often do you see that in racket sports? We will have women playing men in Major League Table Tennis. But I would say the early money is probably on Portland with the experience of Kole. But I need to see how much that ankle injury is affecting him. It kept him out of singles. But we'll see if the uh, paddlers with, Se with Seattle, they do have a righty-lefty combination, which is a very big advantage in doubles. Forces the team to have to move less to keep their forehands into play. Whereas on the Portland side, two right-handed players with Kole and Jiwe Shaw. So you can see, like, right now, the Seattle team on the near side, they barely have to move to just keep playing forehands where on the other side, Jiwei Shaw has to move to the side to get out of the way of his partner. Is there a way for the pair of righties to expose the dual-handed nature by their placement of the ball? Absolutely, playing a lot of wide angles into the backhand courts. The problem is, is you have time after every shot and double, so you just move more and then you've got a little bit of a break before you have to play your next shot. Bobby Diaz, 20 years old from Puerto Rico. Big table tennis family. The, the father has really set the standard for table tennis in the Americas with the three sisters that play. And they're just amazing. What they've done in Puerto Rico just hats off over the last five to six years. It's nothing better than having built-in practice partners as brothers and sisters in your family. So kind of camaraderie Diaz has with Hagberg. And for the most part, we have seen Obviously, a small sample size so far in MLTT, but we've seen Game one of the one, top draft Kale. picks Love playing off. singles. That's not the case for this Seattle team if we get underway. One love. He has the third round pick, the first and only female selected. Hagberg, the sixth round pick. Left. And so this one will love. force the Portland team to play their Left. only female one love. in a singles match. 
be in the fifth position. One off. And we'll see Rachel Sung against Andrew Sow in a little bit. Co-lay to serve. Let. Umpires reminding the players you must toss the ball from the center of your palm up six inches. Two, one. I have an in interesting thing here. Diaz is returning serves with her backhand, thus negating one, the righty left three. to benefit. Normally she would s return serve with her forehand, allowing her teammate to be to the left of where she's standing. And now they're actually forced Two, to move even three. more because they're taking a backhand stance. Diaz with a couple three. good serves. I think it surprised Jiwei Shaw that he was seeing backhand serves. Normally, again, the righty-lefty pair will serve with their forehands and return with their forehands in doubles. Lucky net cord there that just dribbled over. How did that get over the net? It just kept climbing until finally. Four, Not a lot of long points right now. And the net take it and the net give it. Get even through eight points. Back to Hegberg. Five, four. So Cole has something of a small wrap on his right ankle. It's been a little off kilter Six. here, Sean. Right, you could see on that last point when he looped the ball. Not much follow through or weight transfer. Five, but able six. to score the first on his serve. Oh. Yeah, that's Seven, tough for him five. to push off the right ankle when he's looping. That's where all the power is going to come from. Has a long ball, goes from the loop, goes from the loop, goes to loop. Just can't put the paddle on the ball. Oh, what a serve from Diaz. Eight, Whether five. she intended it to be that deep or not, it worked. And that's three straight serves for Fabi Diaz that have flummoxed Jue Shah. This was the first one Six, that Portland eight. got back, and Kole, Kole puts it away. And that's what I would expect to see where Shaw works on a nice placement to set up his partner. Seven, eight. eight. We were tied through the first eight points. Now we're tied through the first 16 points. It's game to three right now. Eight, and nine. Portland takes the lead at 9-8. Just inching their way back. Excellent placement by Shaw. Nine, nine all now as Lay missed the table one more time. Lula Sadovska would be very excited to see Hagberg and Diaz steal this first game in doubles. Every game matters. Nine all. Really, Kole and Jiwei Shaw, the heavy favorites in this doubles match. What a shot from Fabiola Diaz to set up game point for Seattle. Great backhand flip, just a trademark. Her sister Adriana, just a great play. And Seattle steals a point in doubles. 11-9, Hagberg and Diaz take game one. Just a great one-two punch by the young guns from Seattle. Diaz able to keep the ball short and low. And then you have Hagberg coming in and delivering such a strong forehand drive to take the point for game one. Excellent placement. Hagberg 
saw a little alley down the middle there, and he did not miss. We've, we've seen that from Heidberg as a lefty, that hooking shot so strong, especially cross court from his backhand corner. Portland needs to get something going. Really no offense to speak of, just a lot more positional play. And Diaz really taking it and putting it on her paddle with nice deep serves, good control. Look, they only won by two, but it, it felt like it felt like they were in control of that game pretty much the whole way. Even though we were tied at fours and tied at eights. Just more offensive on you, taking more risks and getting rewarded. For a well-placed shot again. Hagberg with the big forehand loop. Portland needs to get going. Game two. Not afford to let Seattle dictate right now. Love off. Young Aussie Phenom Adi Serene coming up with singles next for Seattle. Oh, what a great Rock step one. around again by Hagberg just continuing where he left off on game one, getting that counterattack. Another excellent return from Fabiola Diaz. So far, her backhand has not been a disadvantage one bit. Two, one. So she plays with a pimpled surface on her backhand that allows her to be very aggressive. The ball won't have as much impact on spin when she's playing her backhand. But she won't have the heavy top spin. A lot more hitting and kind of quick drives. Of course, the order changes in game two. So where Diaz Three, was hitting two. to Jiwei Shaw in game one, she'll now hit to Kole. And there's that backhand oh. right off the bounce. Very well played. Again, great drop shot. Ball slightly high, but just snapping that in. Perfect placement by the Seattle team. Real. Oh, Seattle had that one. You can see Hagberg saying sorry for that mistake there. Diaz set him up perfectly. It's been all Diaz's backhand so far in this doubles match. Anything short and high, she's just putting it away. Five, One of four. The first backhand mistakes, that's on you. Yeah. The commentator's yeah. curse. Yeah, well, the Hagberg put so much side spin on his push that she got it all right back and unable to handle. Four, six. And this is where Portland wants to create some separation. Hagberg staring at his paddle as if it betrayed him. <laughs> That's a very common occurrence in table tennis. How dare you miss. Four, seven. This time he bops himself <laughs> in the head. Back-to-back -back er errors, though, have put Portland in a pretty good spot. Very nice over-the-table play by Seattle. Hagberg able to get his forehand attack in. Younger players definitely going for the offense early in the rally. Nice serve by Cole. Heavy underspin. And that shot. Great combination by Portland. Doubles takes some practice, and playing with the same partner in multiple matches really makes life a lot easier. And that time Five, Diaz goes ten. long with the right shot. She set up the backhand. Game point for the paddlers. That's 5-10. It's 
three straight Running matches five. where we have Game seen two, the first five. two games split by the two teams. Portland takes game two here in doubles, 11-5, to set up a big rubber match coming up momentarily. Great forehand loop by Jiwei Shaw to just take offense directly off the serve. Diaz unable to keep it down. Game two to Portland. So it certainly felt like Yue Sha and Cole found a better rhythm in game two. Part of that was just they, they made fewer errors. They, they worked better together. And with, the, with the different order, that will make a difference as well. So we'll go back to the first game's order, which had Seattle coming out on top. Diaz wants to continue to land that backhand. This time... She'll be playing it against Shaw. Are you forecasting the Seattle win here in game three? Well, at, at five points in game three, they will be changing in and changing the order. So the goal as a player is if you've got the good order on your side, try to get up 5-1, five, 5-2. Five, so when that bad order changes, you're not playing at an even keel. And you can create a chance where the score can be a factor if somebody's trailing by five Game or six, three. even yes, though they sir. have a better Love order off. sequence. Game three. <laughs> Jiwei with a great attack off the deep serve, but it came back as fast as he delivered it, and Kole completely flat-footed. Love two. So Ford helped out Portland, and they got a 2-0 lead here in the third and deciding game of the doubles match. Boy, high court. Pummeling, pummeling that forehand. <laughs> for Seattle, he's taking any opening loop and just counterattacking it with ease. Ole giving signals to Chiwe what type of serve he wants. Three, one. That time Ole was able to find the middle of Diaz. Four, one. It's a four, one lead for the spinners. Two, four. Kind of what you said, to get out of the early lead with this order. Right. It's so important that the spinners can take this next point. They'll go into the second half and the final half of this match at a slight deficit, but with a lead. Orders make such a difference Three, four. in doubles play. Two straight points, though, for the paddlers, Shaw and Lay. Late serve. Four Hagberg all. missed it. And four one. It's four all. Players will sit switch sides after this next point. Five four lead for Seattle. So a small little lead for the younger team from Seattle. Now we'll just change the service order. One more Five, serve four. for Diaz. Oh, oh catch in the oh. back corner. <laughs> Seattle knew how lucky they were. They were surprised that ball hit. And then to return it out of the blue and then to catch an edge. Both players realized how lucky that shot was. She's externally apologizing. <laughs> Internally, was she <laughs> celebrating? Absolutely, thinking I'm pretty good here. <laughs> but give Jiwei Shaw credit for getting into this Six, second ball. half order mode. He's played very smart, got the first attack going, and now it's all tied up. Look for Portland to make a run.
And the Paddlers have the lead here in game three. One more serve for Hagberg. It's a big one. Eight, now an 8-6 six. Six advantage for Portland. If Seattle could have reached that five-point change of end with maybe two or three points more of a lead, we could be going back to that 10-10. But right now, Cole just teeing off. Six. Portland looking so strong, experience, big forehands, taking no risks. Missed the shot, but we saw some better footwork that time on that point from Cole. I think the ankle has felt a little bit better as the match has progressed. Yeah, move, moving around in doubles is twice as hard as singles. Not only do you have to get out of your own way, but your partners. And again, Heidberg is Nine. so solid out of that backhand corner. You just don't know which direction he's going to turn and play his forehand to. But Diaz has been so strong on her backhand. Oh, that ball, a little too short. Eight. Hagberg. What a killer miss. Not careful enough. He had the high ball on the forehand, but by the time he got in, any height had dissipated and just caught the net on the follow through. Instead of 9-9. Nine, nine. Game points for the Seattle Ten, Spinners. Eight. Excuse me, for the Portland Paddlers. Seattle Nine. stays alive. And once again, just going down to the wire. Portland with the serve. Yeah. Portland Nine. takes it. Jiwei Nine. Nine. Shaw and Cole win game two, 11-5. Game three, 11-9. And that's Portland's first match win here in this team battle. 5-4 lead for Seattle as we head back to singles, moving towards the golden game. You can see here on match point, again, Hagrid going for an aggressive backhand, side spin flip off of a short serve, just unable to bring it down, catches the top of the net. Game and match for Portland. We are now joined by Jiwei Shaw, the pride of the Portland Paddlers. Jiwei, uh, you lose that first game in doubles, but you battled back to get games two and three. What changed in games two and three to get the job done? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a tough for me to for play the double. First time with the Cole, it's a lot of pressure on me. And uh, I'll just do listen to him and be a good boy. <laughs> And Jiwei, what are you thinking now going into the golden game? What are your thoughts in this new format that has never been really played in the United States? Um, I think it's really interesting. I think um, super nervous, everybody exciting. And then, you know, a lot of good points happens because everybody nervous. Nobody knows what's going on there. So I think it's a perfect format for United States. Jiwei, when you think about your table tennis journey over the course of your life from China to Japan to Portland, what does it mean to now take your game to the highest level in the United States with the MLTT? Well, first, I just want to say thanks to all the stuff from the MLTT to create this league. It's amazing. You know, for me, I'm 34 years old. I have a kids, I have family. It, I can't just, you know, go to my dream and the left of family behind. And now we'll get a, you know, all sale up and a guaranteed pay and we got a bonus. I mean, it's amazing. I have a more chance to come out to play. Be yes. honestly, if they, um, they don't make a um, MOTT, I probably go play pickleball. <laughs> Just have fun. I mean, pickleball is fun too. But yeah. uh, and maybe we can play pickleball sometime. But it's the uh, yeah. It's, this one's definitely is my favorite sport. I mean, it's number one. No questions. It's amazing. Jiwei, we'll see you in the Golden Game in a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Jiwei Sha, first draft pick of the Portland. Paddlers, and he gets one point in singles, two points in doubles, and now we're back to singles. And this is an interesting matchup. The youngster from Australia, Adi Serene, the youngest player ever to win a gold medal in Australian men's singles, and recently won gold at the 2023 Oceania Table Tennis Championships, putting him in the top 40 players in the world, going against Jonathan McDonald, Currently lives in Texas, originally from Stockholm, Sweden. 
And here we go. McDonald to serve. Love First love. point goes to Serene. What do you think about this matchup, Sean? I'm so excited to see Audie play in that tournament that he did win the Oceania Championship. He played in, I want to say, eight different events and won seven of them. Two, the only love. event he lost was the under-17 doubles, but he won mixed doubles, men's doubles, men's singles, jun junior mix, junior singles. So he is definitely a bright Three, spot for love. Australia table tennis right now. That court winner helps him take a 3-0 lead. What is it about his game that has enabled him to have so much early success? I think it's his offense. He is young, he is hungry, he is fast. One, three. When he backs up about three to four feet, he can just keep the offense on the ball. Great placement. Often will be playing out of the Lily Yip Table Tennis Center in New Jersey, so plays for Australia. Often will be in Two, European competitions, three. but also trains in the US. for Serene, I mean, it's one thing for a teenager to be the U15 or U9 ch teen champ, but for a kid his age to be the men's singles champ, not just for a country, but for a whole region. He, he's been amazing, and both playing in the junior events internationally has had super Four, success with three. high world rankings, but pretty good combination there from Jonathan McDonald. Again, as we talked about, the Swedes with Hagberg that we saw, very good table games, moving the ball around, never giving up the table unnecessarily. We tied four all here in game one, third singles match of the day. Close match, 5 4 for Seattle. Just very smart and safe play by Jonathan McDonald. By the way, he did ask us to pronounce his name Jonathan, although he did not seem to care all that much. He said his dad's Irish, his mom's Swedish. So his dad says Jonathan, his mom says Jonathan. But here in America, he's happy to be Jonathan McDonald, the all-American boy living in Texas playing for Texas Wesleyan University in the oh, National Collegiate oh, 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 Association. And there, you see Audie Serene with just a perfect backhand loop for the winner. Five, seven, five seven. lead now for Serene. We saw another Texas Wesleyan current student last week, the Sri Lankan import Sonora Silva, who is a revelation for the Princeton Revolution. And I just loved his attitude. I talked to their head director, Yasna Rather, and she was so up and high thinking that a smart team would grab Six, Silva seven. before the end of the season. Just a complete, great, enthusiastic player. There's some folks out there asking, why is Texas Wesleyan such a table tennis power? They've had scholarships for their players for the last 20 years, and they've become the main Eight, college six. team to beat. And some of the other schools every now and then will take them down, but the good money is always on Texas Wesleyan with their strong international players. Christian Lillaroos from the Paddlers was one of the head coaches there also. I'm just going to assume that if there's a team that has existed, Christian has coached them at some point. And you just tell me if it's a team he hasn't coached. Yeah, he said he hasn't been to uh, Korea or New Zealand. Those are the last two on his international bucket list. Those would be the 74th and 75th countries that he's visited. For the passport. Seven, nine. And Serene just really taking his time, winning the battle on the serve and serve return, mixing it up, forcing McDonald to have some direct errors. A little back and forth in this game. Serene now two points away. McDonald has served. And he 
missed it wide. He set it up exactly what he wanted, Sean, but could not finish. Huge point to miss the forehand smash. Just great forehand loop. Goes for the kill too wide. Shot that amateurs like me can understand. And Serene takes game one, 11-7, to put Seattle in front, 6-4. The teenager from Australia begins his MLTT career with an opening game victory. And a nice forehand flip off the serve, a little bit of a misdirection, but then staying on the offense to keep the pressure on Portland. Excellent play by the Australian. So there's been some controversy, Sean, about Serene's world ranking. He's currently number 39 in the world. First of all, can you explain to the viewers how that ranking is determined and, and what do you make of Serene's ranking at his age and what is his ceiling as a player? Well, his ceiling is unlimited. He could make top 10, top 15 in the world where he is at his present age. The way the rankings work internationally is it's a 12-month moving scale with a very strong presence on regional play, both in the Americas, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Oceania, which Audi plays against Fiji, Australia, and New Zealand. And by winning that competition, he gained 500 ranking points, which just skyrocketed him into the Game top two, to upper serve. echelon Love. for ITTF and World Table Tennis rankings. Clearly, there are a lot of players that would love to play him, Love. but he's doing what he needs to do in his region. He's winning all the important tournaments. Is the ranking system the same way it was when you were playing? No, it's, it's changed almost every single year. When I was playing, they actually had a committee that would send in kind of like One a off. coach's result and just rank the top 100 and then they would tally them up and put players, and then they moved to computers, and they've changed more of a tennis or an ATP. It sounds like it's a little bit more mathematics used now, as opposed to just I, the I like, naked I eye. Like, yeah, I like this system, although, and I also like the head you're, head. You're, you're saying that there might have been some bias in the rankings in the early, mid-80s? Yeah, the problem was we didn't play that much, so they never saw us. So in this type of system that they're doing today, um, the Americas and Australia, Oceania, much better chance to get. Oh, there's a nice chop there by Serene. Off the table, so strong, just keeps the ball in play. That's a tremendous point, showing the versatility of the young Aussie. Just great ball feel, whether he's chopping or fishing the ball, just keeping it in play. Two, three. Good placement there by McDonald. Table tennis is a sport of a lot more placement than people realize. Off the serve and serve return, both two. players will be jockeying for position before trying to unleash their strong forehand and backhand attacks. Jonathan McDonald, known for his long, lengthy arms. He's got a pretty good wingspan. Call him the octopus out there. Yeah, and along with these longer arms, that means that middle in between his forehand and backhand. That's generally where Four, players three. will attack. You gotta get out of the way. Your elbow is gonna be on a hinge in between your forehand and backhand position. <laughs> Little resemblance in terms of the body type with Daniel Medvedev in the tennis world, the long lengthy style. Just set it up perfectly, but unable to complete the forehand loop. McDonald did everything that he wanted, but again, Serene just keeps the pressure on, regardless of where he is, close to the table or playing mid-distance. That backhand is beautiful by McDonald. Of the backhand and forehand sides for McDonald, I, I think I would rather be playing his backhand from his standpoint. Very aggressive. 
placing it well. 6-4 Six Six elite now for McDonald here in game two. And I, I will say, Evan, that in Sweden, the backhand is one of the strokes that they've always paid a lot of attention to, using it as a weapon instead of just keeping it in play like a lot of the Asian countries. That ball caught the top and it went long. I wonder if in the Golden Game the coaches will either intentionally or unintentionally give us the Battle of Swedes, McDonald versus Hagberg. Very well could be. And then also, if I look at that backhand, how strong is that? He just whips right through it. No hesitation. Once that ball's on his backhand side, he just spins Audi around. Do the players work on that pirouette, Sean? No, not when you get <laughs> spun like that. Try to hold your ground. Oh, in control, the point of the forehand off the initial return. McDonald now in front, 8-5. Just a nice series of attacks from the forehand side by McDonald. Almost at the ceiling with that Eight, service six. toss. I think Serene knows the importance of trying to keep a sweep opportunity alive. Seattle definitely thought this was one of the matches that they should come out on top. It's based on world ranking. Eight, seven. As Chris Berman likes to say, that is why they play the games. Nothing done on paper. We've got a table. And McDonald with the serve. Missed it Eight. wide with the forehand. The backhand is clearly McDonald's strength. Eight all, game two. Their team gets to eight points first, guarantees them the edge heading into the golden game. That forehand is really letting McDonald down right now. His backhand has been on fire. He's been hitting winners on the backhand side, but right now, Serene playing a lot more balls to the middle and forehand. Great point, but Serene takes it. And he's on a heck of a run to set up a couple more game points. And again, credit Serene. He could have gone defense, but he kept that offensive stance. Even though he's off the table, he quickly kept the attacks going, both on the forehand and backhand loop side for the point. 5-1 run now for Serene to seize control here in game two. And Adi Serene has taken the opening two games over Jonathan McDonald. A 6-1 run to close that one out, 11-8. Just wonder if maybe a timeout would have made sense for Portland right when it got tied up. But instead, they kept everything moving at the same momentum level. But Audi Serene just continues on his winning ways. I think it's a great point, Sean, and it's easy to say in retrospect. But you know, a timeout when you've given up three out of the last four, it's still tied. Is that timeout more tactical or just kind of taking a deep breath and re restarting your emotions? I think it's both. I mean, we see it in basketball. If you're up by six or eight and the team comes back, you stop the bleeding right there. You don't let them get a lead and then let that game get away. So Audi had already taken the first game. It was looking good. But then Jonathan had played so well, so many strong backhands. High. Hitting bombs left and right. But again, Credit the 15-year-old with having the experience and the presence of mind to just finish out the game. Strong finish to that match from Adi Serene. Game three, just Tyler great Sturt. attacks Love off. by the young Australian. All right now, game 
three. First Love point to one. Serene. A week ago. Player that won the first two games, only won the third game half the time. One long. Do you expect that percentage to go up as the season progresses, or is this just such an unfamiliar mental experience for both players? I think more of the latter. Audi up 2-0 and being a young gun, I would look for him to tra treat this like Benjamin last week said, each match individually. Treat the game like a match and feel like you're playing three times out there and not like it's just one match. That's a great backhand loop there. Uh, very strong by Serene, moving the ball around with ease. Rossier, the Frenchman who had some really big points in the, uh, I just, in the Golden Game. I, I love so many of the players that we had at Daytona Beach, but Benjamin out of his backhand corner, often knocked down. Two, what three. a great fighting attitude, especially in the Golden Game. McDonald right there. Best point of the match so far. McDonald doing a great job of moving the ball around, keeping pressure on Serene. But again, McDonald's backhand so strong. Forehand tends to keep it in play. At that time, the forehand delivered. Oh, aggressive Four, serve right into McDonald's backhand by Serene. Handcuffed him a little bit. As you can hear. Audi Serene after every point, giving himself a small bit oh, of encouragement. And there, the backhand from the forehand side by McDonald. Just a little flick of the wrist. Portland needs this game to stay close. Five, four. And the final singles match we're going to see today is a mixed gender matchup. Rachel Sung for Portland, Andrew Tsao for Seattle. Whether it's 8-4 or 7-5 going into that will be a significant factor. Five, going four. into the golden game, the team that's ahead will either get a 1-0 lead, a 3-0 lead, or a 5-0 lead. Big point there by Jonathan McDonald. Short serve, Audi Serene's return went off the side of the table and McDonald with the direct winner. Five, six. Serene with a fist pump, back within a point at 6-5. On his serve. A lot of pressure by Serene. McDonald got the backhand, but it was on Serene's timing. Very nice deep shot. You see at the top of the screen, Nikhil Kamar is giving some coaching to Serene. That's the beauty of the team that everyone can coach, especially during the timeouts and the end of game breaks. You worry about too many cooks or voices in the kitchen? Usually, the most vocal will speak the loudest, and usually it's because they have something important to say. But the players do a nice job of handing off That's tactical tips. Seven, six. I'm sure, it's going to be interesting as the season goes along and players have reps against one another, deeper scouting reports. And there's the backhand six, of McDonald. Eight. Anytime he can set that up, it's just constant pressure. There's his forehand's a little bit more erratic. Oh. Well, you saw the good backhand and the erratic forehand on display. Back-to-back -back shots there. And Audi Serene 
needs to be thinking how important the sweep would be. He could pick all three games here and double the team points for Seattle. Nine, seven. Nine, seven lead for McDonald as the ball comes back to his side with two serves and an opportunity to close out game three. Salvaging a point for the Paddlers. Just a quality backhand opening there by McDonald. Serene needs to get it more to the middle or even possibly on the forehand side. That'll do it. Jonathan McDonald battled hard through the first two games, could not overtake Serene until game three when he earns a point for his team with an 11-7 win. He gets quality openings there by McDonald, making the forehand land very strong. Third ball attack, Serene unable to keep the point going. Seattle leads 7-5 going into the final singles match of our first team match tonight. Of course, the Bay Area Blasters and the Texas Smash make their debuts in a little bit here. But first, let's chat with Adi Serene. Who earns two points for the Seattle Spinners. Rachel. Adi, thanks for joining us. What was it like competing in the MLTT for the first time? Oh man, the nerves were there, man. I felt like so nervous and anxious, but also really excited, you know. I I played pretty good shots, some shots not so good, but yeah, I'm very excited. What has the past year in this sport been like for you? Um, I mean, I've been traveling around the world and playing like all these junior competitions in Oceania, so it's been pretty hectic, I would say. And how difficult was it to go up 2-0 and have one more game to play mentally? How did you prepare for that? Yeah, it was like, it's a little bit hard to focus, you know, like you felt like you already kind of won, even though there is a third game and each point matters for the team. So yeah, I would say that, yeah. Your first golden game is coming up. What's the mentality heading into that, those little four point increments? I don't know yet. Um, we're gonna figure it out as a team, but I'm just really excited for it, you know, I feel like we can go in with good pressure and do some damage, you know. What's it like as a 15-year-old to be playing professional table tennis? I'm just going to say it's pretty hectic, like you have to travel around the world and all these big guys look so tough, so. <laughs> is, is it fun, Adi? Yeah, yeah, I would say it's really fun. I like it more than school. <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know you'll work hard at both, table tennis <laughs> and school. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the yeah. Golden Game. Thank you so much. Adi Serene. Charismatic 15-year-old from Australia. That surprise you that he likes table tennis more than school? <laughs> I think that's the common. There's a good excuse not to be in class, but he definitely has put in the time and energy to get to where he is in the sport. All right. The, the combined age of the next two players is younger than either you or me, <laughs> Sean. 19-year-old Rachel Sung against 15-year-old Andrew Sow. Andrew will turn 16 on Tuesday. But even if we say he was 16, the combined age of these two players is just 35. And these are three critical points hanging in the balance, obviously, with a score 7-5. Rachel has beaten Andrew when they've played in the past, but uh, she, she was not overly confident when we are chatting with her before the game. It's a new dynamic, the nerves are real, the lights are hot and bright, and this is gonna be interesting as these two teens tangle here in Santa Cruz. And Rachel's just coming off of a very successful Pan Am Championships where she helped Team USA qualify for the Olympics in Paris. So normally there'd be a little bit of a letdown after a major competition like that, but she knows she's gotta be ready for Major League Table Tennis. One, love. Another lefty with Rachel. 
look for her to spend a lot of time blocking on her backhand side and staying very close to the table. Splitting the first two points. Sun does consider herself to be more of a defensive player. On, on the forehand, she'll attack, but on the backhand, she likes to keep it in play. That's a nice One, backhand two. opening there that goes long. Andrew, much bigger forehand. Sal from Houston, Texas, the U17 boys champ at U.S. Nationals this year. So a lot of fast hand-to-hand -hand combat with Rachel staying, staying so close up on the table. Both these, both these players have won big tournaments pretty recently. And that's a great opening by Rachel, just jamming it into the backhand corner. Sun will use a lot more placement. Sal will go for the big shots. I don't know where you are you with young Andrew Sal's game. I've been watching him play at the national level, just a super hard worker. And one thing that I like to do is just look at the leg strength, and you can see it there on Sal. That's the result of a ton of footwork drills, and a lot of power on the forehand side. Four, three. Very good play by Rachel Sung. Nice combination. Tyrese and coach Christian Willerus showing their appreciation. Oh. Sal with a ferocious forehand after Sung's net cord hung up for him. That's just great footwork by Andrew. Just staying with the point. Walk catches the net, but he still has the presence of mind to go for a big forehand drive. Five all. Just like that, we're even five all. Amazing how Rachel Sung was able to return that net ball from Andrew's forehand, but Andrew stayed with it, delivered one more. We have not had a 3-0 sweep in any of our matches so far today. Three of the first four matches, the team split the first two games. Last match, so he won the first two. McDonald salvaged the third. And that last point is classic Rachel Sun. Nice short serve, controlled open to a good location, and just constant pressure. Not giving her opponent any time to get into the rally. Again, smart placement. That time Rachel did a deep push into Andrew's wide backhand, staying away from his lethal forehand. Seven off. Oh. Seven apiece. Serve goes back to Rachel Sung. Not a ton of emotion from either of these players, both stoic. Focus. Now look at that backhand. Rachel loaded that backhand up and just delivered it straight down the line. Again with these righty-lefty matchups. See a lot of straight balls for the final shot. Sung dictating the tempo there to take a 9-7 lead. Just a complete change in the momentum right now. Establishing her rhythm shutting down Andrew Sow's big forehand attack. Eight, Short return, nine. and Sow did not miss. Back within one. This game's been close the whole way. Certainly these players feel pretty evenly matched. These are the critical points right here, Sean. Nine all. Game to 11. And teammate Nikhil Kumar giving Andrew directional advice on where to play his attacks to. 
Nikhil, a master of placement. Stayed on Tao's side, so it'll be a game point for Sung. Nikhil's the old man on the spinners at 20 years old. Sung, this 19 game point. That 10, 9. Missed it. 10 all. 10 all. Sal able to jam Sung right into the body. Final singles match of the day. Game one goes to Universe. Oh! And Sal takes it. Game spinner. Good deep initial return from Sung, but Sao handled it and then seized control. And just got his attack in. He needs to be offensive minded. Nice forehand loop, counter attack, unable to clear the net. Point to Seattle. so far in the 13 games we've watched so far today. 8-5 lead for Seattle, so the spinners are guaranteed the edge heading into the golden game. And now it's just about how big that edge is going to be. And it really allows Andrew Sal to take a little bit more of an opportunity, play with a little bit more risk, knowing that he's got the score on Time. his side. But look at those forehands, just so much power. Nice backhand open, then a powerful combination right there by Andrew Sal. He's doing a great job of placement, trying to add to Team Seattle's. Game two, Tyler serves, love off. Three point lead. Rachel Sung will serve to begin game two. Taking a big rip at that forehand, unleashing a little frustration. Sung is very effective on her own serve. Really sets up her forehand nicely when the ball goes over there. But look oh! at that backhand play by Rachel Sung. Just stayed with it and able to block back the counterattack by Andrew Sal. Rachel's great moments. Three one lead for Sung, and the four singles or the four players for Portland today. Before Rachel, all men, ages 34, 35, 22, and 24. And here you have this 19-year-old young woman in a very important key role in this paddler's team making its debut. And with this mixed singles matchup, one would think, why doesn't Andrew just blow the ball by Rachel on every opportunity? But she has great speed, tempo, her serve and serve return. Let four, one. Little yeah. place there by Andrew Sal. Finding the middle, which is not easy against Rachel Sung. Rachel loves to play a quick backhand off the bounce when players push to her backhand and then finish up with a big forehand attack. Two, five. Sung responds, wins the point on South serve. We're back up by three. And this is a big point right here. If she can get two full breaks to go up 6-2. Have enough breathing room to maybe try something a little bit riskier. Five, and she went five, for it. Sal 
Makes it 5-3. That last backhand just caught the top of the net. That's exactly what Rachel wanted to do. Let's get the serve, make an opening loop, and then play quick off the bounce. A little early on that backhand. Sometimes the timing for the male players against females on their opening loop, it doesn't have as much force on it. You can really screw with the angle that you have to play to get the ball back. Five, six. Sun's had some opportunities to create some separation, and then you look up and it's a one point game. Andrew's done a nice job of winning the big points. Those are great attacks there by Andrew Sal. Rachel up on the table, able to put her paddle on the ball. But very strong play by Andrew. Big backhand loop, forehand combination, another backhand. Just constantly attacking the ball. But that's the quick play of Rachel Sun. Loves to play the ball off the bounce. Big hitting. Sal with the equalizer at 7 all. And now with the serve, look for, look for Andrew to try to get his forehand directly and maybe even finish the point. Who do you think has the edge, Sean, in the longer rallies as they pound it back and forth? Definitely Rachel, because she's standing a lot closer to the table. Andrew's going to have to run things down. Rachel plays a much quicker game. Andrew with a lot more spin and power. Eight all. Eight all, though. Different styles, but these two players are a pretty good matchup for one another. One point separation in game one. And now a one-point lead for Sal in game two. Game points coming up for Seattle. Great, great block by Andrew Sal. Rachel got the first opening attack, but Andrew made the quick block off the bounce put himself in a position to win this game. Game point. And Andrew Sal seizes control late. Takes game two, 11-8. Andrew rewarded with a huge forehand to finish off game two. Made one backhand block, but then boom. Very heavy forehand down the line, out to the forehand side of Rachel Sung. Excellent placement. So 2-0 and oh start for the 15-year-old Andrew Sal. And Rachel Sung trying to dig deep to make it a 9-6 match heading into the Golden Game as opposed to 10-5, which would be a significantly steeper deficit to try and dig out of. I don't think any team wants to go into the golden game spotting the opposition the full five points. See, all, all, all smiles on the Seattle sidelines. I, I do like what Christian Lilyrose has done with Rachel Sung. She had a kind of a look on her face 
almost like close to tears as she walked back to the bench. And Christian said something that made her laugh. And they were both chuckling a little bit, just lightening the mood. I mean, that that's the definition and an experienced coach Game three, understands that it's third, players' well-being first. You don't jump on top of them and tell them what they haven't done. You make sure they're mentally ready and fresh. But right now, with a 2-0 lead, trying for a sweep, Andrew just has everything going his way. Love two. <laughs> Again, he's just... He caught the edge there. Yeah, just getting his racket on the ball. Rachel attacked his serve well, but somehow Andrew Sal just kept the pressure up. Love three. It's such a great feeling when all your attacks are landing and then you start winning points from a defensive stance with your blocks and placement. Four, love. And now missing her own serve. This is getting away from her a little bit. I've seen her a few times wave the paddle in front of her face like a fan. It is warm in here. Five, before the match love. started, Switch. well before they had air conditioning Switch. on, and you could feel kind of a little breeze in this field house style arena. We have a timeout call. Rachel Sung goes to chat with her coach, Christian Lily Rose, but they, they told the team that they would turn off the air for the actual match, understandably, and it is warm in this building right now. It's definitely warm, and it's even hotter off of Andrew Sow's racket as he's just got an answer for everything here in game three catching the back edge of the table, making all of his attacks land, and Coach Lillarose just wants to make sure that he just doesn't allow this game to be completely given away at 05 when they change ends. I'd like to have Rachel make some type of run to get back into it, maybe create some momentum. To the left of Coach Lillarose is Idan Levy, the owner of the Portland Paddlers. You've coached his son, right? Um, I've, I've, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to coach his son yet. He's on the international Paralympic team for Israel. And I played with Idan when he was much younger. And, and when you were much younger, too. Exactly, exactly. We hadn't seen each other for, I think, at least 17 or 18 years. Wow. So I just Five think it's zero. so wonderful to see table tennis players we also have off Dima Ofcharov, who's a new minority or majority owner of the Princeton Revolution, getting into the, One, five. the Major League Table Tennis action. So Rachel comes out of the timeout with the first point. One more serve. Two more. Left. One, five. Sao just continues to pummel away. He's winning the battle of the timing. He's getting back far enough to where he can keep the heavy top spin. Make it difficult for Rachel Sung to move Seven, the ball around. Eight, he, Andrew's just firing on all cylinders. Not known for his backhand, but on that last backhand, clearly delivering a winner. Oh, it's just funny to me, and that's a good return from Sun to say not known for his backhand. My response would be, he's 15, Sean, <laughs> give him some time. Yeah, the problem is his forehand is just so lethal that he would rather play 80% with his forehand, 20% with his backhand, and that's the type of backhand that we would normally see where it's more of a keep it on the table. But when you have an eight, seven or eight point lead, all bets are off. You can go for shots from e any side of the court. Eight, four. Rachel Sung not going away. We'll a couple more big swings. Great forehand attack. Time out. Off of a backhand spin. Time out taken by Seattle. Smart move, very smart move. 
five nothing lead and Rachel has won for the last seven points. Sal with a couple serves when the play resumes. Sun doing a much better job. Nice forehand flip for the winner there. And a nice service combination, getting her forehand to land into the backhand. And then this final point here. Great placement, forehand attack off the bounce to bring this game back into contention. Time. Luba Sudovska said that she wanted to have a young team. Her first draft pick was 20 years old. Her second draft pick was 15. Her third draft pick was 20. Her fourth draft pick was 15. 8 4. And then she took Paul Chi, who's a very old elderly man at 30. Oh, what a Nine, wonderful four. forehand move there by Andrew Sal. And the 30 year old, by the way, is the eldest <laughs> member of the Seattle Spinners. Four, Good on. timeout call. Yep. Sal with a slew of game points. First sweep of the day game belongs to Andrew Sal. The first game, he was down 10 9, and he scored the last two points to come back and win it. And then more convincing performances from Sal in games two and three, closing it out with an 11 4. Demolition over Rachel Sung. And I really feel, Evan, that that first game set the tone for this entire match. After going up 1 0, Andrew played with a lot more confidence, a lot more attacks, was able to get back into a comfortable distance from the table to just keep those attacks going and neutralizing Rachel Sung's speed off the bounce. Delighted to be joined by the young Andrew Sow. Andrew, congratulations on the 3-0 sweep. What did it feel like to be playing Major League Table Tennis for the first time? Um, in the beginning, I was kind of shaky and nervous, like when I, especially on serve receive and everything. But after I won the serve uh, first set, like barely, I gained a lot of more confidence and I started playing better, more risky and like more confident on my receive. And then after that, I just felt like my, I was playing my game. And it, yeah. Did your teammate, Nikhil Kumar, help out with some of the placement adjustments? We saw him standing up, shouting out some advice. Yeah, he actually, he plays with her a lot, so he he coached me most of my match, but yeah, he told me a lot of things. Like in the first set, I was nervous, so I was giving really obvious um, balls to her forehand, so she kept countering in backhand. In the next two, in the second and third set, I adjusted better and I played better location. Can you tell the fans who don't know your story, Andrew, that the quick journey of how you started this sport, how you became good, and what it's like to elevate your game to the professional level at just 15 years old? Happy um, early birthday, by the way. I know you got a birthday oh, coming up. Um, really, I just, like, you can't really get too down on yourself when you play really bad. And when you win a lot, you still can't, you can't celebrate too much. And sometimes you play bad, sometimes you play good. So just keep going no matter what. Today. That's a mature response. I don't believe that he's almost 16, but that's what we're told. Is that true? Yeah, I'm almost 16. Thank you. Happy birthday next Thank week. You. We'll see you in the Golden Game here in a couple minutes. Thank you. Andrew Sal, a 3-0 sweep over Rachel Sung. He's all business, Sean. He, he wasn't ready to play along with any of my tactics <laughs> or antics, but that's, that's totally fine and understandable because the, the most exciting part of the match is still to come while... Seattle has won four of the five individual matches, including that last 3-0 sweep from Andrew Sal. The full match is still totally up in the air because, remember, six points for the Golden Game. It's 10-5. Now Seattle begins the Golden Game with a 5-0 lead, but we'll see if Portland can mount a rally here and change the narrative of the night. And it's gonna, it'll be interesting once we see the lineups to see which players are matching up. And of course, the doubles players are going to be playing. So right now, Seattle has to be feeling good just because of the momentum and just sweeping coming into this golden game. So the 
initial orders populating. Rachel Sung is going to stay on the table and play the first three points. Cole, Jiwei Sha, Tyrese Knight. We're going to get the females going head to head. Sung and Diaz. And Cole and Andrew Sal. Kamar and Shaw. That's a rematch of what we saw earlier. But uh, we're, we're going to see Serene and Knight. And then we are going to see the two Swedes go head to head in the five spot. Are there any spots on that board where you think Portland has an advantage and can maybe make up some ground? I would say maybe in the number one and two spot, advantage to Portland, but in a four points, anything can happen. It's two, two, two sets of serves each, but it's really with Cole in the two position for the Portland paddlers. We haven't seen, because of doubles, how well he's going to be able to move in singles. Normally, that would be a major difference of the top-ranked U.S. player against a 15-year-old Andrew Sal. Of these five matchups that we're going to see in the Golden Game, only one is a repeat of what we saw earlier. And uh, that's the three spots, Jiwei Shah and Akil Kamar. Kamar took two out of three, including an 11-2 win decisively seizing the third game. And the players don't get, um, it looks like they are going to get a little bit of warm up. No warm up. There's no warm up. That's the pressure of the golden game. You come out and the ball is in Zero play. No, no warm up, but no yellow cards for the warm up either. Sung to serve. Portland's on the board. Sun, the much higher ranked female on the ITTF World Table Tennis ranking. Sun has taken the first two, now just one more, because they switch on multiples of four. So with a 5-0 lead, these two will play three points and then hand it off. Three straight for Rachel Sun. It's got to feel good after getting swept 3-0 in singles. Able to balance it out and Team Portland giving Rachel. She, she, she cracked a smile. A yeah, she was. And then Coach Christian Lillerus explaining to her just how important three, those three points were. And now Portland's strong Cole against Andrew Sal. And look for Sal to try to make some big shots. When you're playing the number one U.S. ranked player, you're not going to win it by just putting it on the table. I mean, Andrew Sal has been remarkably poised. But to be 15, to be going against Cole for the first time in this stature, it's five straight for Portland. And get Sal with a big forehand there to take the lead right back for Sal Seattle. Sal played so smart to get it out wide to the forehand. Cole having issues still. Sal wins the final two points, so he splits the foursome from Cole. 7-5 lead for Seattle. As we see a rematch of the First singles players, the top draft picks for these two teams. Jiwei Shah set to serve to Nikhil Kamar. Kamar missed it long. Kamar had the shot that he wanted after defending so well against Jiwei Shah's first attack. Two in a row for Jiwei Shaw. And Jiwei Shaw is feeling it right now. Coming out with the five-point deficit. Portland looking very strong. Oh, <laughs> leaving no doubt. I mean, that tomahawk chop smash that oh. Nikhil Kumar just delivered sent the ball stage right outside of the court. But 
catch three out of four for Jiwei Shaw. And Portland, after trailing five nothing, has tied it up eight all. Now this is gonna be an interesting matchup with the defensive star, Tyrese Knight. Let's see if he's gonna be able to mix it up against Audie Serene. And he starts with the, the edge. edge. He has gotten more edge balls. Yeah. Too straight for Tyrese Knight. Portland has won 10 of the 13 points since this golden game began. And it all started with Rachel Sung coming out and sweeping for individual points. And another edge. <laughs> Adi Serene looking around like, for real? You're gonna do that to me, Ball? Adi just trying to salvage one of the four here before the Swedes take the tables. Now four straight for Knight. And Knight delivers. That is huge to sweep right now. Knight doing a great job of just mixing it up. There's the backhand chop, and then comes in with the heavy forehand side spin loop. Perfect placement. McDonald serving to Hagler. What a point. Hagberg dug it out from underneath the table and then sees the offensive just a couple shots later. Just went forehand to forehand, giving him the big advantage here. McDonald serving. Both these guys have been really impressive today, Sean. Just super controlled, great forehands. Again, moving the ball around. Normally you don't see the Swedes making that much of an after point celebration while the game's still going. Usually you don't have a golden game. So they split their four points. Two apiece for McDonald and Hogberg, and now back to the start. And look, if Seattle's gonna come back here, Bobby Diaz needs to dig deep. She was swept three straight by Rachel Sunk at the start of this golden game. That set the tone. 14, 10. Diaz chance to make amends right here on the receive. 14, a good 11. opening there by Diaz. She needs to force the offense. She cannot allow Rachel Sun to dictate. Diaz bringing the game face back to the table. Oh yeah. What a change in momentum when the ladies are playing. It was all Sun in their first meeting in the Golden Game. Now it's all Diaz. 13, 14. Three straight for Diaz, and we've got a one goal, uh, one score game here. Look at the concentration on Diaz. She knows exactly what she wants to do. And then that's four straight for Diaz. Sung took three in a row to start the Golden Game. Diaz answers with four in a row, and it's 14 all. 14 all. Back to the 35-year-old veteran Cole and the 15-year-old wonderkind. Andrew Sow. And Kohle was able to win points directly off of his serve in their first matchup. Yeah! Keep it on, keep it on. Kohle puts Portland in front. Strong offense by the top rated U.S. player. Three time Olympian. Looking like it. Just, once Kole gets his forehand into play, it's generally lights out. Sean, ho hopefully we live in a world 20 years from now 
where we're seeing 35-year-old Andrew Sal against another 15-year-old kid who's not even born yet, and we're thinking about this first night here in Santa Cruz. Going against Cole in the Golden Game. 17-15 for Portland as Cole takes three out of four in that sequence from Sal. And Portland is within striking range right now with four points between Jiwei Shah and Nikhil Kumar. Nikhil wants to bring the spinners back into play. Jiwei Shah has been so solid here in the Golden Game. That's four out of five points for Shah against Nikhil Kumar, the two-time reigning U.S. national champion. 18-15. Kumar back within two. Shah just pushed that ball a little bit too high. Kumar had no difficulty delivering the backhand blow. The side. 18. Caught the net and went off the side. Let 17 oh, this is not 18. Win by two, Sean. Straight to 21. Wow. 19, Big forehand loop by G. Way Shaw to give his team some breathing space. Ken Tyrese Knight. Battle the 15 year old phenom from Australia to give Portland to come from behind and win. Six points are on the line right now in the Golden Game. Knight serving, two points away. So 19 18. Not going down without a fight. It's 19 18. If it's 20 all when these two finish their sequence, it'll be the Swedes that'll decide it. Just one point. 19 all! Serene with a big counterattack. Knight makes the perfect opening. Serene upping his game when it matters most right now. Serene could win it on his serve. Knight sets up match point. For the Portland Paddlers. Off of Serene's serve. What a strong attack. Timeout. Timeout taken by Seattle. This is great stuff here in Santa Cruz. Knight just taking his time, short return, and then gets that lethal forehand in. You can see the excitement on his face as he wants to pull the mini upset here. And you can see the entire Portland bench realizing match point. So Serene serving here down one. What do you think's going through the mind of Jonathan McDonald and his countryman Jay Hagberg? Because if Serene wins this point, it'll come down to those two Swedes, and McDonald will, will serve. 19 20. I think I mean, both of them are ready to play but Serene needs to take care of business to force this super overtime. Tyrese Knight wins the golden game for the Portland Paddlers. 21-19, Portland comes from behind. 11-10, the Paddlers prevail. MVP for Tyrese Knight, pulling the big upset, playing his best when it's completely needed, leaving the defense and going on offense. Safe return, turns it right around. What a return to put Portland in the leadership role for the win. For those who are watching in Daytona Beach last week, you know these Golden Games are a different species for this sport. And, and that's just, I mean, that's as good as it gets in terms of high-level drama. 
And for the fans, it's never over. Even though there was that five point lead, Rachel Sun came out, got the initial sweep, and then it was just Portland point by point clawing their way back. Let's chat with Christian Lily Rose, the coach of the paddlers who's doing a paddling dance. Dance away, Christian, congratulations. How were your emotions throughout that roller coaster? I'm a very non-emotional person and I'm bursting out of our, you know, belief energy. <laughs> so Rachel Sung was really close in game one in singles then lost games two and three, then was out there to start the golden game and really set the tone for you. What'd you say to her and how proud are you of her effort? No, it was a very crucial decision because the initial plan was to go out first. But if you have just lost a match and then go out and play first, it was very critical because I had a real long talk with her. Can you handle it? Can you recharge? And she said, yes, I can, but she could. She so, started unbelievable. So Christian, how big was Tyrese Knight at the very end of that match? Uh, can I go to Mount Everest? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty big. That was unbelievable. I mean, it's like, um, we go down 0-5, and I think at one time, I think we were up like 12-3, something crazy. And of course, going down 0-5, we have to have an initial momentum to have a chance, and we really got it. And I, I put in, we had a pretty good combination in the beginning because Rachel is pretty good against Fabiola, and then I had uh, Curley, who goes in against Andrew, that a really good shot for us. We got an unbelievable good start. And that's what we needed to have a chance. And, and, we, and then at the end, we kind of got, even and they kind of fight back and then we kind of finally pull it through. So we were like outmatched and to, to be able to win at the end despite all that is, is called also a, a credibility to our system in this play, right? We were down 10-5 and because we won this, we won the team match, which is unbelievable. And, and it was, we were, uh, there was a lot of hard fight, but it was also very lucky. Seattle was like really outgunning us. I don't know how we won. <laughs> When Seattle called the timeout at 20 to 19, what, if anything, did you say to Tyrese? Well, the interesting thing was that at 19 all, I gave him a timeout sign. Do you want a timeout? And he shook it up. No, no. <laughs> so so when, when, uh, when uh, Luba called the timeout at 2019, I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do right now. But it was kind of fun because um, I, I wasn't really sure what to tell him. Because like I would, we were trying to speculate, oh, what are you going to serve? What are you going to do? Like, but the main thing was that you have to you play how to play aggressive. That was the main thing. You cannot you cannot play play uh, not so safe at the end. You have to believe in yourself and go for it. And he did. And he he was like, that's a big one. Last thing, Christian, you were a couple points away from losing this match, 16 to five, but you play those clutch points better and you win it 11-10. What does that mean for this team in its first ever match as you head into the rest of the weekend and the season that's ahead? Well, the thing is that we, have, we had a lot of setbacks actually in this, in this first team match. So the, really, the thing is that our, our normal number three player didn't get a visa. Uh, we have some injuries going on, some sickness going on and stuff like that. So with, despite all this kind of negativity to some extent going into this match and still pulling it off, I see that's like, it can only get better from here. That's what I'm saying. Going so, to so, it. So we are, and, and we, we have specialized a lot in the Golden Game. We have done a lot of training. And don't tell the other coaches, okay? We won't. This is just between <laughs> the three of us. Just between the three of us. I know, just between the three of us. Go enjoy the win with your team. Look forward to seeing what you can do tomorrow. Oh, I'm so excited about that. Do you have anything to say to everyone that picked you last? The anyone that won? Th there are folks that picked you to finish last, right? That's it. Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. Oh my goodness. We're going to tell you, we're going to bust your bubble. We're not <laughs> finishing last. That's no way. Christian, enjoy it. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for your commentary and your help. Christian Lily Rose, the veteran coach, taking a new tenure, and the Portland Paddlers. Sean, what a dramatic way to finish this opening match to our first West Coast weekend of Major League Table Tennis. Just a great continuation of intensity and great table tennis play. Can't overlook Jiwei Shah's effort in that golden game as well, taking a bunch of points from Nikhil Kumar. What, what, what a match. So much fun all night long. And hey, we're just getting started.
the Texas Smash and the hometown Bay Area Blasters. They're going to take the table in about 10 minutes, but for now we're going to sign off for just a short breather. Tyrese Knight clinches it against Adi Serene, and Portland prevails 11-10, as close as it gets in the MLTT. For Sean O'Neill, I'm Evan Lepler saying so long for now. Bay Area and Texas coming up next, but this first night belongs to Portland. <laughs>